it all led us to this one moment. The TVL increased by 50%. There's ties to the Federal Reserve. Eight years worth of dedication and research. Coinbase Ventures has Axelar in their portfolio. Making money, losing money, making money, losing money. I've paid the price. I've exhausted all of my resources and dedicated my life to this one thing. They have partnerships with MasterCard, Microsoft, Circle, Ledger, Binance Labs, Coinbase Ventures, Dragonfly Capital, Polychain Capital, and Galaxy. Microsoft will actually be showcasing their technology on the Microsoft Marketplace. In the quest to find the next 100X altcoin, all roads lead to one destination. The technology's there, the real world use case is there, and they're connected to probably the biggest industry leaders in the entire cryptocurrency landscape. The price is very, very undervalued. I would not be surprised if this coin 100 exits. Generational poverty will be destroyed. There's a magnet, it's floating on my chest. It's really great to be able to go anywhere, everywhere, and just make money from this rooftop here, you know? I used to hate being in a cubicle. I just like getting around the world. Like I like being out here. I even got my vitamins, my vitamins. I like optimizing my health, optimizing my focus, optimizing my life in general. I think it's very valuable. And I think it compounds in every area of your life. In this video, I wanna talk about an altcoin that's guaranteed to rise soon. This is a crucial time for crypto right now. We have approximately 130 to 150 days till the next Bitcoin halving. And I'm just diving extremely deep into understanding these undervalued altcoins because I want to buy as much as I possibly can, like Pokemon. I made a significant amount of money off of Pendle Finance and the Arbitrum ecosystem. Now I wanna branch out into other ecosystems and find these gems. There's gems all over crypto. People think 100Xs are impossible. They don't know what they're talking about. I've gotten multiple 100Xs, I've shown people 100Xs, and 100X is like turning $1,000 into 100 grand. It's like turning $10,000 into a million dollars. This is the beauty of this market. This market grows rapidly, exponentially, and I do believe that we are in the mainstream adoption phase of crypto. I think this cycle for the next year to two years is the mainstream where it goes mainstream, where it gets adopted by multiple countries as legal tender. I also believe that the ETF is gonna bring legitimacy to the cryptocurrency market in a way we have never experienced before. A lot of people that thought crypto was a scam cannot say it's a scam. They're coming out with a Bitcoin spot ETF, which will bring legitimacy to all other altcoins. And this is going to flood our altcoins, our undervalued altcoins with liquidity, which leads to price increase, which leads to us making money again. I have done this in two different cycles and I'm so excited for this cycle. I'm so excited to take advantage of this cycle and make a whole bunch of money, make generational wealth, pay off the debt that I've had, you know, student loan debt, credit card debt. I also wanna buy a house. I also want to build savings accounts. I also wanna pay for my daughter's education. Things like that can happen with cryptocurrency because of the big, 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 big wins. It's not about if you're gonna make money in the crypto space, it's if you're gonna keep it. A lot of you have experienced last cycle's bull run, but you didn't keep any of the profits. That's the game. Again, every coin will appreciate by thousands of percentages, like the majority of them will increase by thousands of percentages. But the question is, do you have a system in place? Do you have a checklist? Do you have a research strategy that will put you in the green financially? Will you sell? So again, in this video, I wanna talk about an altcoin. The amount of research I've put into this altcoin is absolutely ridiculous. It's gonna be in a complete presentation. And if you wanna get access to the actual PDF, you can join CoinPix Army or CoinPix Inner Circle. Oh, I got spit on the lens. CoinPix Army is a dollar a month and it gives you access to information you otherwise would not get on YouTube. 
CoinPix Inner Circle is my master program. This gives you everything I know about cryptocurrency trading, including my buy and sell calls exactly when I do it, as well as 100 plus videos on exactly how to navigate the cryptocurrency space. If you don't know cryptocurrency, this is your solution. And if you didn't know holiday season, it is currently 75% off. During holiday season, CoinPix Inner Circle is thousands of dollars off. This is a discount I have never done before in the history of my entire business. It's 75% off, take advantage with the link below. So guys, this is eight plus years of experience and research all into one coin. It took me almost two weeks to research this coin. Everything I got, I do believe this altcoin is pretty much guaranteed at this point. I really do believe that. So let's jump into the video. I'm up next, I'm up next. I'm up next, I'm up next. Waiting patiently, my God, I am blessed. It's funny because I'm over here parking somewhere and I found this. Man, I had a problem smoking weed for the majority of my life. I've been smoking since I was 14 years old. If you use marijuana to cope with an uncomfortable situation, meaning you feel more comfortable, you feel more calm when you smoke marijuana, this is gonna lead you to a lot of bad things. I used to think it was good. Oh, it's a natural, it's a natural thing. Trust me, I know. I know all about marijuana. I took it to a crazy level. I've been smoking this for 14 years. You know, expert in marijuana. It is bad for you. I don't care who's watching this video. It's probably leading to insecurity. It's probably leading to you doing less work. There's so many different things. Your memory issues, like it's actually bad for you. It's not just marijuana, by the way. It's also anything you use to cope with your issues. If you're using alcohol to cope with your issues, if you're using a woman, a relationship to cope with your issues, you are doing the same thing as smoking a marijuana for addiction. When I quit smoking weed, my entire existence changed. And I got way better as a person when I quit smoking weed. I don't know if you guys seen uh, the new Ray-Bans. I could write boom, watch this. I'm recording right now. So I could literally record you from per first person perspective. These glasses are crazy. And it automatically turns black. Is it turning black right now? In sun, it automatically turns black. Look, it's turning black. It's turning black in real time. This thing is crazy. I feel kind of cool with these glasses. The coin we're talking about is Axelar. So this coin is in the Coinbase ecosystem and it's with Base, the layer two created by Coinbase. The strategy that I use is the SMART strategy. And this is an acronym for basically the overall structure of what I do when I find an altcoin. So the first thing I do is seek the market trend. Then I look at the macro liquidity of a coin. Then I look at the altcoin fundamental analysis of the specific coin. Then I use risk management to plan out exactly how I'm going to buy the coin. And then I track the trade once I buy it. I track the trade accurately to see if I'm making money or losing money and when I should take profit. But what I'm doing today is the macro liquidity and altcoin fundamental analysis. It's literally a checklist. You can go down the checklist and check off if the coin has it or not. You can pick a, you know, I don't know, 10 altcoins and literally filter out all of the scams, all of the coins that are gonna lose you money, all of the coins that are gonna exit scam with this system. It's very important that you have a system. If you don't have a system, you are gambling in cryptocurrency. Let me say it again. If you don't have a proven system to trade in crypto, you are gambling. And there's a huge difference between a gambler and an investor. To analyze liquidity, I actually have another framework, which is called DEEP. First things first is I look at the decentralized exchange liquidity. Then I look at the exchange availability. How many different exchanges is the coin on? Then I look at the exchange volume. How many trades are taking place on the exchanges? Then I look at the protocol TVL or the total value locked. How much liquidity has the coin attracted in its actual DeFi ecosystem? And there's more to it, but this is the main four points that I look for to make sure the coin I'm buying has good macro liquidity. So let's go through the first one, DEX pool liquidity. As you can see, there's a substantial amount of trades happening. We're talking about 12 million. As you gain experience in this market, you'll be able to gauge what good volume is and volume changes depending on a bull market or bear market, but this is on the higher end of volumes. Also, if you go on coinmarketcap.com, they actually have a liquidity score and this liquidity score is pretty high. And this actually gives you some insight in where you should buy the coin. So Axelar, 
I will probably buy it on Uniswap version three on the Ethereum network or PancakeSwap or Osmosis because that's where all of the liquidity is. When you buy the coin, you'll get a better price and you'll be able to sell at a better price. I want you to imagine basically a flow, a stream of water, right? And the stream of water has all of these little kind of uh, different paths the water can go, right? The stream of water is one stream and there's like kind of like this crossroads with different paths. That's like the different blockchains, right? There's different types of liquidity pools amongst the coin. So it, let's say it goes left, right? Let's say the liquidity goes left. And in this pool, the pool is just so much bigger, right? This has a lot more water. That is going to be Uniswap version three on the Ethereum network. That has the best liquidity, the best liquidity score, the biggest pool of money. And you see that there's many streams in which the overall liquidity can go. They call it liquidity for a reason. It is like water. We identified that there is good liquidity and where the liquidity is actually going. Let's talk about exchange availability. Here's the top spot exchanges. I have other videos that explain the difference between a centralized exchange and a decentralized exchange. In this case, these are centralized exchanges. And as you can see here, the exchange availability is actually really good. Axelar is found on four of the top eight worldwide. Now, I would give this actually a 10 out of 10. Why? Because let's say hypothetically, the coin that you're looking at is on eight out of eight of the exchanges. Let's say it's on all the exchanges. The problem with that is that there's no new exchanges for it to go on. So what I like to see is that it's on some big exchanges and not on others. So when it does launch on the other exchanges, then there's a price increase with that. For example, Shiba Inu got listed on Binance May 10th, 2021. Now, if you look at the actual price of Shiba Inu, you can see that the price skyrocketed and this was the exact top of this spike right here. So when it comes to token listings, yes, it does ultimately lead to increase in price over a long period of time, but initially there's a sell-off. So pay attention to that. Also, if we look at Polygon Matic, they launched on Coinbase Pro on March 9th, 2021. If we come over to the price of Polygon Matic, you can see that around March 9th, this ultimately led to a massive token increase in price. And there's also something called the Coinbase effect, meaning that tokens average a 91% increase in the first five days of launching on Coinbase. Coinbase listings have the highest average return standing at 91%, but also have the widest distribution ranging from negative 32% to 645% increase. If it's on all the exchanges, you'll never get that benefit because every time it launches on a new exchange, the price goes bananas and there's a whole bunch of new buyers, right? So again, this is like a 10 out of 10. It's literally on half of the top exchanges. So when it gets launched on the other four, the price will increase. And the beauty of it actually being on the top exchanges is that we know it's not a scam. Look, it's on Coinbase, it's on KuCoin, it's on Kraken. These are credible exchanges. And we know that since they're already on there, they're probably not a scam. And that's a really good thing. You always wanna find a balance of it not being a scam, but also being undervalued and has the potential for the price to increase in everything you do when it comes to researching altcoins. Now let's talk about exchange volume. How much volume is actually happening? So as you can see here, again, good volume. 400,000 in a day is pretty good. 300,000, 100,000. And as you can see there, even 17 million, that looks a little fake, but you can see that there's good liquidity, good volume. That's pretty straightforward. Again, you'll be able to gauge it as you go through your experience in cryptocurrency, understanding what good volume is. Now, let's look at the last one. This to me is probably the most important. Protocol TVL, total value locked. And as you can see here, they have $153.7 million of TVL in the protocol. One thing that's good to note is that in the last month, the TVL increased by 50%. This is a very good thing. What's up, babe? All right, I'm coming in like two minutes to be there. The reason why TVL is so important is because this gives liquidity to the protocol to do various functions, right? Not only that, it shows interest. It shows that whales are actually interested in investing their money into the protocol. And Axelar has 153 million. It's not a lot, I'll be honest. That's not like crazy amounts. But the beauty again, is that it shows us that it's not a scam. There's $153 million, right? And at the same time, it has the potential to increase and go to like three, 400 million and appreciate by large percentages. Now, when it comes to TVL, every protocol has a different mechanism to adopt liquidity. So we'll be exploring exactly how Axelar does that 
But when it comes to the macro liquidity, looking at the big picture perspective, this is a good framework. The deep framework is a very good framework to identify, okay, this project looks legit. It has good liquidity. It has good volume. The liquidity looks good. It looks good to continue the research path. So we got through the entire deep liquidity macro framework. Let's jump into the next part, which is Coinbase and base and why Coinbase is so significant. Right now I'm looking at the overall platform in which the coin is on. Axelar is on base, which is a layer two that is created by Coinbase. And I'm going to explain to you the significance of this. But my wife just got out of her appointment. So I'm going to go pick her up. How was it? It's good. What do you do? Many do So we're having a baby next week? Possibly. What's her name? Analia. What does that mean? Um, the grace of God. You guys can't see it, but I'm messaging someone from the research team. And shoot me a DM if you think you have what it takes. Kale tonic. Cheers. I don't drink alcohol. Let's get into Coinbase and how they launched a layer two called Base. A layer two is essentially something that stacks on top of the blockchain to make transactions faster, cheaper, and more efficient. That's the whole point of a layer two. Now, if you know anything about crypto, you know that the winner layer one is the Ethereum network. All the liquidities on there, all the infrastructure, all the big players are connected to Ethereum and they really just only care about Ethereum, most of them. If they're talking about another layer one, they're typically trying to promote it for their own selfish interests. But if you look at the market with an unbiased perspective, Ethereum has pretty much won that game. The problem with Ethereum is that it's super expensive and super slow. And this is where the layer two comes onto the Ethereum network which was created by Coinbase. Now, the interesting part about this is that this is a layer two that was created by a centralized exchange. Very interesting, why? Because centralized exchanges have an absurd amount of users and liquidity. They have a lot of users and liquidity and they're funneling those users and liquidity into the layer two. This is the first time we've ever seen that from a layer two. So. If we look at the growth of base over the first five months, they had about 569 million TVL. The amount of money that went into the layer two is $569 million. Now that's okay, it's not the greatest, but again, I wanna highlight that as of September, 2023, Coinbase Global reported total assets of 137.651 billion on its balance sheet representing a significant increase of 30% year over year since 2022. The significance of Coinbase is that they have so much money on their exchange. They have so much money that they could easily funnel into the layer two. And if you look at the competition, Arbitrum, they have about seven, $8 billion. So we're talking about $137 billion potentially transferring over into this layer two. And in, it's growing 30% a year. So it already has five, $600 million and it has all of this untapped potential. That is what you wanna look for when it comes to coins. As of August, 2023, Coinbase Global had 56 million verified users. And it's also projected that Coinbase could reach 150 million verified users before the end of 2023. And also what's significant is that Coinbase is highly tied to the second biggest stablecoin on the market, which is USDC. If you know anything about USDC, I mean, they pretty much partnered with Coinbase. They don't say it directly, but Coinbase allowed transfers from USD to USDC for free. And you can't find that anywhere else in any centralized exchange. Not only that, but they launched on Coinbase. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but its significance came from Coinbase. All of USDC significance came from Coinbase. They were like the main exchange for the longest period of time. Coinbase is gonna do everything in its power to get people on base. And if you know anything about crypto history, this worked very well for BNB and Binance. Now BNB is a layer one, it's not a layer two, 
but it worked very well for them. And Binance has gone up large percentages, and I believe it's in the top 10 by market cap in the entire world. As of August 2023, Binance Holdings had 89.5 million verified users. Ending in June 2023, it also held a TVL dominance of 8.66 of the entire cryptocurrency market. They had almost 10% of everything. That's pretty ridiculous. BNB had an ICO price of 15 cents and it went to $686. It was one of the highest percentage increase coins last cycle. Now, obviously price is not exactly the same as TVL, but as you can see, they're very, very correlated. If TVL goes up, usually price follows. So when it comes to the base layer two, we could basically look at Binance and BNB as a case study when it comes to centralized exchanges creating blockchain systems. And another big thing to take in consideration is that base currently does not have a coin. They don't have a coin. They're just simply a layer two. Now, if we look at other layer twos in the past, most of them have airdrops. So what they do is they get a whole bunch of users to use their platform. And then whoever uses their platform, they essentially airdrop, right? All of the tokens, not all of them, but a certain percentage of the tokens over to the users for free. I participated in the Uniswap airdrop and I made like, I made almost 10 grand off of that airdrop. I held the coins. I don't know exactly when I sold them, but it was like worth like 10 grand at one point for free, just for using Uniswap in the past. And you can see from Arbitrium right here that Arbitrium's liquidity literally doubled. It doubled when they did an airdrop. So it went from about $3.5 billion in TVL to $7 billion when the airdrop happened, meaning much more liquidity into the base ecosystem. Adding to my argument, there's a lot of potential, a lot of reasons why liquidity will likely enter the base ecosystem. Not only that, but the coin that we're talking about, AXL, will likely take advantage of the fact that base doesn't have a coin, right? If they don't have a coin, AXL is currently the number one liquidity protocol on the base ecosystem. Hear what I'm... Listen, you heard that? You heard that beep? Listen to what I'm saying. They're the number one liquidity protocol. So they're getting most of the adoption right now until BASE comes out with a coin. As you can see right here, when it comes to the ecosystem of BASE, Axelar is number one, number one, number one. Not to mention Coinbase Ventures actually has the coin in their portfolio. So Coinbase has multiple companies and in their venture company, meaning their investment company, they own this coin. Not only that, but if you look at Coinbase Circle, which is the creator of USDC and the Federal Reserve, and if you know anything about my previous videos about the Federal Reserve, I mean, they're the ultimate power in the financial world, you'll know that they are all highly correlated. Let me say it again, all highly correlated. The Federal Reserve has hired five X Circle employees to work on the issuance of a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. Circle, Coinbase, and the Federal Reserve are highly correlated. And the Federal Reserve is the powerhouse of all modern finance. They issue the United States dollar. So there's a huge correlation there. There's a huge correlation. And guess what? Coinbase happens to launch a layer two, right? Think about what I'm saying right now. They all trickle down into the base ecosystem. And Axelar, the coin I'm talking about, is literally the number one coin in the base ecosystem. And Coinbase Ventures has invested, come on, put two and two together. When it comes to the big picture perspective of Axelar, I mean, I don't know if there's a better macro case. Like the base ecosystem, I believe, will increase by large percentages. There needs to be more developers, more coins and things of that nature, and more infrastructure built out. But the amount of resources behind the base ecosystem is absurd. And there's ties to the Federal Reserve. Like, just think about that. The second biggest, you know, stable coin on the market, the Federal Reserve, I mean, what? Coinbase is probably the second biggest centralized exchange, all pointing towards one entity, which is the layer two base. And then the number one coin on base is Axelar. I mean, I don't know what other case I can make for you, but it's pretty significant. Not only that, but if you've been keeping up with the Bitcoin spot ETF, which is probably one of the most significant events in cryptocurrency history, probably top three in the entire history of Bitcoin, this is one of those events. If you keep up with it, you'll notice that every company that is filing for an ETF, their main custodian is Coinbase, meaning all of the Bitcoin that they're holding in the ETF will be held on Coinbase. 
I believe 90% of all of the centralized exchanges main custodian is Coinbase. Just think about that. Just think about that. That's absurd. That's absurd. The amount of credibility behind Coinbase is crazy. And all of it is pointing to these, this ecosystem. And this ecosystem is pointing to Axelar. So when it comes to macro liquidity, it's like a 10 out of 10, in my opinion. When it comes to Axelar macro liquidity, there's really not too much more that in, in the crypto space that's better than that. Now let's talk about altcoin fundamental analysis. So I decided to hit the rooftop AC Sky Bar and I wanna talk about altcoin fundamental analysis. Not only am I gonna talk about the fundamental analysis of Axelar, but I'm also gonna go into my entire fundamental analysis system. This is a system that allowed me to find undervalued altcoins. It's literally a checklist. You can literally rate each section per coin and come up with exactly the overall rating of the coin and then compare and contrast coins in the same ecosystem. It's called the master's strategy. The master's strategy is composed of a couple of things. The first thing is the micro liquidity. We talked about the macro liquidity. Now we have to talk about the liquidity that's allocated for the specific ecosystem. Then we have to, of course, analyze the use case. You know, what does this coin actually do to help people, right, and make money? Then we have to study the tokenomics or the economic incentive model for the actual coin. And then after that, we actually have to track the team and see if they're a professional team, are they legit, do they have credibility, can they get partnerships, things like that. And then we evaluate the marketing. How well are they able to reach audiences their specific audience, how well are they able to do that? Then we have to track the regulatory environment, which is obvious. Are they gonna get regulated out of existence? And then of course the last one, we have to search the news to see if there's any news that's relevant to the coin. So let's go into micro liquidity for Axelar. A good way to identify good micro liquidity is to go over this four step process, but really it's all individual to the project itself and it can all change. But here's the system, first thing, does it have enough liquidity to not be a scam? You know, I've seen so many people buy projects that have $30,000 in a liquidity pool. Meaning if somebody with $30,000 bought it, it would literally double in price. It's probably a scam, okay? We wanna look for a good amount of liquidity. Now, there's no specific number because that number changes in the bear market versus the bull market. In the bear market, you'll have lower numbers and in the bull market, you'll have higher numbers when it comes to scams. There could be billion dollar projects that end up being scams. So in this case, is there enough liquidity not to be a scam? And is it low enough for the price to increase fast and high? Meaning there's projects that have a lot of liquidity, way too much liquidity, an absurd amount, like the biggest projects we know, like XRP and Ethereum. There's nothing wrong with these protocols, but they won't increase in price as fast. I'm looking for smaller protocols that are not scams that will increase in price very fast. That's my goal. Number three, the quality of the liquidity, where it came from, who it came from, how it got there, where it is, that's important. And it's also important for when you actually make your trade because if you make your trade on a low liquidity centralized or decentralized exchange, you will get worse prices and actually lose money as you buy the coin. So this is very important. Number four, potential for future liquidity, probably the most important variable. Can they attract more liquidity in the long run? Remember, of course the game is about price. We want the price to increase. But the question is, how does the price increase? And that answer lies in the liquidity. Can they attract more liquidity? That is pretty much the only variable I look for, one of the only variables when identifying a project to research. So it's very important. I do believe Axelar will give us a lot of liquidity in the future. So let's look at some statistics here. First things first, the market cap is 382 million as of 12, 11, 2023. And you can see that on Uniswap version three on the Ethereum blockchain, we have $5.49 million worth of liquidity. To me, that's enough, especially right now in the bear market, that's enough for it not to be a scam. Also, there's some other places like the Osmosis Dex, where it has 2 million and PancakeSwap has $137,000. Now, the thing is, what you guys have to understand is a lot of projects will claim they're on multiple blockchains. They're on this blockchain. They're on 45 different blockchains. But if you look at the liquidity on those blockchains, they don't have that much liquidity. 
And that's very important because are they really on that blockchain if there's no money on it? If you can't buy on that blockchain, if you can't bridge your money over, which we're gonna talk about next on that blockchain, is it really there? Not really. So look out for red flags in that area. So if we look at the bridge liquidity, you can see that they have their own bridge with the technology, which we will be talking about the use case. And there's a good amount of liquidity on the Osmosis network. We already talked about this as well as the Ethereum network. Now, when it comes to the most liquidity, it's going to be on Coinbase. So you see what I'm saying? Put the pieces of the puzzle together. We have Coinbase Ventures investing in it. We have, it's on the layer two base, which is created by Coinbase, right? Coinbase has a hundred billion dollars worth of liquidity, right? Look at what I'm saying here. This is actually an interoperable liquidity protocol. The whole point of Axelar is to attract liquidity and to allow for people to move from blockchain to blockchain with their proprietary technology. So this is wonderful. This is amazing. Now there's a really good thing that I do and I want you to get in the habit of doing, it's very important, which is understanding if you are gonna buy the coin, where you're gonna buy the coin and exactly how it's gonna happen. Why? Because if you don't plan out your transaction path, right? Let's say hypothetically, I wanna buy it on Uniswap. If I don't plan out every step, then I could spend a lot of money in transaction fees, right? And it's also wise planning out how to get out too when you wanna sell it and sell it to your bank account, how much money are you gonna spend and where is it gonna go? It just so happens to be that with Axelar, it's very simple, but with other blockchains, it can get pretty complicated and it's very important that you understand each individual action. For example, with Axelar, you're gonna go from Coinbase and buy USDC, right? Withdraw the USDC to ERC20 or the blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain, and then you're gonna send it to a MetaMask wallet, of course, right? And then you're gonna trade the USDC for Axelar, okay? Which is literally the most liquid and the most efficient way if you wanna buy it on a decentralized exchange. Now, if you wanna buy it on a centralized exchange, which is probably gonna be cheaper, you can just buy it directly from Coinbase. But you can see there, deposit fiat into the Coinbase and then trade USDC for AXL. Now let's jump into analyzing the use case. Question is, how big are the other coins? What's the market size? If Axelar starts taking market dominance, how much could it possibly grow? Well, we looked at a couple of websites. The first one is CoinMarketCap, which basically says that when it comes to interoperability, there's about $9.2 billion in the interoperability landscape. And then if we look at other websites like CoinGecko, they say there's about 2.4 billion. And um, DeFi Llama had some tokens here and there, as well as Mazari had a different type of token list. It's about an eight to $10 billion market in my personal opinion, from what I've looked at, the data can be incomplete, it's not perfect, but that's what it looks like. The interoperability market is, I think one of the biggest use cases in all of crypto, because there's so many different blockchains, so many different layer ones, so many different layer twos, they need something to bring them all together. So whoever can solve that will get a lot of liquidity because for example, let's say hypothetically I have Ethereum on blockchain A, but the fees are cheaper on blockchain C. The question is how I'm gonna get there, how cheap it's gonna be, how fast it's gonna be, and how accessible it is. That's the question. Whoever can solve that problem, that's like a hundred billion, probably $200 billion problem. So the interoperability market, I believe, is going to only grow from here. So let's look at the actual purpose of Axelar. Axelar acts as a blockchain that connects other blockchain. It uses a proof of stake mechanism to operate as an overlay network delivering secure cross-chain communication. This allows for a seamless interaction between different blockchains, a crucial feature in a landscape where there are numerous isolated blockchain ecosystems. And this is their actual technology. Axelar is designed to serve as a universal development platform. It's not just an app. It's a universal development platform providing robust tools for cross-chain computation. The actual technology is called general message passing. And it's a feature that facilitates secure, turning complete cross-chain computation, enabling developers to create applications that operate across multiple blockchains. This is the infrastructure under the actual apps. And that is what I'm looking for. That's what blows my mind. It reminds me of Ethereum, right? Ethereum is the infrastructure that allowed coins to be created. 
Now, although that worked, it's very expensive and people had to move to layer twos. And now that we're on layer twos, there's so much fragmentation. There's so many different layer ones and layer twos. So they not only are providing a unique technology for developers, but they're creating a solution for everybody. Axelar's GMP can handle arbitrary payloads. These capabilities are the infrastructure for a novel generation of cross-chain native applications. Applications using their technology can not only send crypto, but also NFTs, and they can also send functions, and as you can see here, queries, meaning they can send code and messaging to other blockchains, and that's the beauty of Axelar. Now, it's not all perfect when it comes to some of the metrics of Axelar have to be transparent. For example, when you look at the market cap divided by total value locked, right, the ratio, you can see it's not the best ratio. There's not a lot of TVL in the protocol compared to its market cap. And that's what I want to see increase. And I do believe it's going to increase because their marketing is specifically tailored towards infrastructure and institutional players. And, and I'll explain more on that later. Now, if we look at the current use, you can see transactions, volume, active users, and gas fees are all showing a positive trend correlating with the price of Axelar, signifying a positive relationship between the use case and the value. This is very important. They're on all an uptrend. This is a good sign. And if we look at the number of developers plus the contributions to Axelar, it's growing and it's correlated with the price of Axelar. So we see growth metrics doing very well for AXL. And then I believe the most important is that we see a healthy and steady increase for active users. The active users, there's people using the protocol. Very, very important. If we look at Axelar's bridge and compare it to other bridges, Look at the volume on Arbitrum Bridge. Look at the volume on the Polygon POS Bridge and the ZK Sync Bridge versus Axelar. It's so small, Axelar is not even close. Look at the TVL by millions. Axelar only has 170 million on their actual you know, bridge. The crazy part about that is that it has so much room to grow. Axelar, remember, remember, the reason why I'm so confident, the reason why I believe the credibility is there is because of the whole Coinbase, not direct partnership, but very, very correlated partnership. Coinbase is all over Axelar. So I think they're market making this coin and it has so much room to grow. This is the important part. This is how you find 100Xs. This is how you find 50Xs. This is how you get coins to appreciate by large percentages. You need to find coins that are undervalued, not coins that are already overinflated and have huge market caps. Coinbase Ventures, has Axelar in their portfolio. We talked about that. Not only that, but Axelar is the number one coin in the category of base. If you look at the base specific coins, Axelar is number one. They have partnerships with MasterCard, Microsoft, Circle, Ledger, Binance Labs, Coinbase Ventures, Dragonfly Capital, Polychain Capital, and Galaxy. There's gonna be a lot more on this later, so pay attention. Now let's talk about the tokenomics. This is probably the worst part about this coin. Not all coin is perfect, but I will make a positive case for why I think it's okay. 59% of the allocation is delegated to some form of early investor slash team allocation with the majority yet to be unlocked. So that's a large percentage of people holding the coin that could possibly sell it. But just think about what I'm saying. Coinbase knows that there's a bull run around the corner. They know it for a fact. They know the Bitcoin having, they know exactly what's going on. I personally believe that they are not in a rush to sell the coin. I believe they're going to hold it because they know for a fact they have liquidity. Remember, most of the liquidity is on their centralized exchange and they know the bull run is around the corner. So I think it's very, very wise for early stage investors to continue to hold the coin. I do believe that they will because it's just a bad time to sell right now. I don't, I don't think anyone's selling right now. So this is the actual trajectory, as you can see there, and 33.3% of it went away in the public sale. So again, just a little bit of centralization when it comes to owning the supply, but we're all trying to make money, including them. So I believe they have no reason to sell. Now let's look at the team. Their professional experience is amazing. They have big time people coming from Algorand, which is a successful blockchain company. And they took that experience and brought it to Axelar. The co-founder has a strong background in networking, distributed systems, and cryptography. He was deeply involved and the development of advanced cryptographic protocols and primitives during his graduate studies at MIT. He also has a PhD, guys. He played a pivotal role 
and building out the Algorand blockchain. And as you guys know, Algorand was wildly successful. So he has successful experience, not failure experience, but successful experience. We have another dude that has a master's degree in computer science from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. He was also heavily involved with Algorand. This is the biggest reason why I think their team is amazing. They're involved with a successful project and they were heavily involved and then they decided to do their own thing. The success rate is high with people that are like that. They have established a network including partnerships with major blockchain ecosystems like Avalanche, Cosmos, Ethereum, Polkadot, demonstrating a strong professional network. So here's some other team members. I'm not gonna go into it too much, but as you can see, they have you know, some pretty good credibility. Previous work at Time Magazine, partnerships, Bloomberg sales and operations. I mean, we're talking about infrastructure engineer for SRE Chainlink. So he worked for Chainlink, was responsible for increasing the team from three to 20 developers. These are all big things. Lead expansion program for Stripe. I mean, come on, we have all types of credibility. Overall, very strong team, consists of a technical CEO, their partnership game is on point. They have a very strong legal team. I mean, they check off pretty much every single box when it comes to their actual team. Very, very, very strong investors in this project. Binance Labs, Coinbase Ventures, Dragonfly Capital, Polychain Capital, Galaxy, that's huge. If we look at the track record of Coinbase Ventures, 325X, 7.92X, they've had some pretty good gains, right? Coinbase Venture Coins do well. Same thing with Binance Labs, as you can see there. 45X, 325X, right? They invested in some really good projects. 314X, Polychain Capital. Basically what I'm showing you here is that the companies that invested into Axelar know what they're talking about and they get gains, they make money. Galaxy Capital, 7,000% increase. Now let's jump to marketing partnerships and news. Publicly, they're not that strong. As you can see here, they do not meet the 1% engagement rule on Twitter. If you want more details on that, head on over to CoinPix Inner Circle. This is where all the explanations for everything is. When it comes to their public presence, it's not that, you know, it's not that crazy, but that's not their marketing focus. Their marketing focus, again, like we talked about, is a liquidity protocol trying to integrate into other systems. They're a platform for developers. So when I give their marketing a high score because they were able to secure big, big partnerships like Microsoft, that's their marketing. Their marketing is finding big partnerships with big people and they do it very well. Axelar has partnered with Microsoft to enhance Web3 and traditional internet systems. This collaboration aims to leverage public blockchains to secure trust and accelerate the integration of artificial intelligence in mainstream applications. The partnership involves integrating Axelar's secure cross-chain communication network with Microsoft Azure, a move that promises to provide a seamless experience for Web 3.0 developers and users. This high profile partnership underscores Axelar's very strong industry connections and its technological capability. Microsoft will actually be showcasing their technology on the Microsoft marketplace. That's pretty crazy. This will help onboard users from Web 2.0 and they're working in the AI space. So think about it. They're taking advantage of multiple trends and they're working with Microsoft directly. That's ridiculous. They also have partnerships with MasterCard, joining forces with the Start Path. This is a startup program with MasterCard. And again, showing that they can line up partnership with real world application. As you can see from the founder, Axelar and MasterCard are both leaders in payment innovation. Axelar is looking forward to collaborating with MasterCard and building the future of the interconnected finance. It gets even crazier than that. They actually partner with JP Morgan. Axelar joins forces with Onyx by JP Morgan and Apollo to conduct a groundbreaking experiment showcasing the prowess of smart contracts and efficiently handling client portfolios on a large scale. They're literally using the interoperability technology, integrating with portfolio management and JP Morgan. It's very obvious that the technology's there, the real world use case is there. You got some big people invested in the project that wanna make money and they're connected to probably the biggest industry leaders in the entire cryptocurrency landscape. The price is very, very undervalued. The TVL is very, very undervalued. The base ecosystem in general is very, 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 very undervalued. I would not be surprised if this coin 100X is.
Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's Christmas, I had a wonderful time with my family, and I just wanted to conclude this video here by saying, look, Axelar has very, very good potential. I do think it's extremely undervalued, and I will likely purchase the coin today. Yes, today on Christmas Day, I will probably purchase the coin. If you've been watching my previous videos, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I believe the market is gonna continue to go up because of the Federal Reserve specifically. I believe the market's going to fall when they start printing money initially. So as soon as they start printing money, I believe the market is gonna fall through a black swan event, a random event, it could be a war, it could be, I don't know. It could be just a random event that sends us into an emergency situation where they have to print money, and that's when I think the market is gonna take a steep fall. Um, but until then, I think we're good. Um, I think we're gonna continue in a bull run, and I think I'm gonna be able to make money. So I haven't purchased a coin yet, I'm not 100% sure about the decision right now. You know, I'm taking my time. Maybe I'll purchase it tomorrow. But if you do want exactly when I purchase it, because again, my opinion changes all the time. New research comes up all the time. CoinPix Inner Circle is at a discount I've never done before, 75% off. And I will end it after the new year. So I'm going to end it January 1st at midnight. I will be ending this 75% discount. This discount actually lasts forever if you stay on the plan. I do a month to month with CoinPix Center Circle, so you get 75% off every month. And you continue with that discount until you cancel it. So you could have it for five years. And as you guys know, I increase the value of my product, which will therefore increase the price. So essentially you get my premier product for 75% off forever until you cancel it. So this is very, very big. We have like six days, seven days till the discount ends forever. Like I'm not going to do 75% off for a very long time, probably ever. I don't know for sure. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. This is the first time I've done it and I highly doubt I will do this again. I did it for the bear market. I did it so that we can have a whole bunch of people come in right before the bull market goes bananas because you guys know the Bitcoin halving is in like 93 days, 92 days. So I'm doing this absurd discount for you so that all of you can win and take advantage. And if you wanna know exactly when I'm buying Axolar, if you want the PDF, and the entire presentation, there is more slides in the presentation that I didn't talk about in this video. And again, I wanna say it one more time, most importantly, the exact time I buy, I do it down to like a minute. Like I literally go, I buy, and then I tell people exactly how much I bought, not the dollar amount, but the percentage of my portfolio so you can have good risk management. And of course, the entire system that I do, everything, because you guys are just getting like two out of five of everything that goes down into buying a coin. I told, I showed you guys the smart strategy. There's five steps. In this video, there was only two. So you can see how significant I dive into these cryptocurrencies. I treat it like a professional. And I think you right there at the other side of this camera should be trading like a professional. If you're a beginner, if you've never done anything in crypto, that's what the course is for. I have 160, 200, I don't even know. There's there's hundreds of videos pre-recorded to take you from knowing nothing, zero about cryptocurrency to becoming an expert of my level, right? You can ask me any question you want and I update, I, I do like kind of like a real-time course where I'm putting three to four videos a week of what's happening right now. So if there's any outdated information, you get updated and you can you know continue with what's going on in the market on a day-to-day -day basis. I highly recommend for anyone that's trying to take crypto seriously. Guys, there's a huge difference between someone that's just lollygagging and, and being a gambler in cryptocurrency and someone that has a refined, verified, and repeatable strategy. This will get you results quicker. And remember, in crypto, when you make a mistake, not only do you, you lose your time, but you also lose your money. So I highly, 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 highly recommend, of course, this is, this is it right here, 75% off, everything I've ever learned about crypto, a continued updated course on a weekly basis, and not only that, but I'm also making a brand new course, and that's coming soon. So take advantage, get this discount forever, lock it in, because after the first, I don't want nobody hitting me up like, hey, where's the discount? It will go back up in price 100%. I've been doing this discount for a good amount of period of time for all of the holidays. So take advantage. 
I love you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I hope you have a great day. Peace out. I'll see you guys in the next video. There's another altcoin I'm researching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like the quality of this content, hit subscribe. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. I said it three times. And if you don't get with it, you will get left behind, guys. I love you so much. I've been doing this for a while. And I say that like last piece a lot, man. I say the same thing over and over again. You will get left behind because it is really true. It's really true. If you don't take what's happening serious right now, you will. I repeat, you will get left behind. The bull run is here and it's time to make some money. It's time to set yourself free. It's time to break the chains of poverty. It's trying to change your life forever. All right, guys. I love you guys. Catch you later. Peace out.